How are we doing now? Three things which I'm finding our academy members often get wrong when they're working with trades, especially when you're starting out on property, because you don't really um, get taught that at school. When you've got a job, you don't really learn about how to actually schedule tasks, agree prices. So in this video, I'm gonna cover a few things that we do with our trades people, trades men or women, to help you get their price right, to help you make sure it happens on time, and to get the best quality job too. Okay, so maybe you're watching this and you have never ever used trades before. And they can be quite scary, especially when they turn up um, and they may be the language that you don't often use. Maybe they're for, they maybe um, you're quite, you don't like negotiating. Maybe you don't like talking about money. So all these things can really get in the way of you getting a good deal, yeah? So if you struggle with trades, put a yes or a comment below and then we can engage in a bit more, we'll do a bit of comments. Um, but maybe you absolutely nail it and you get the best price possible. So my name is Tom Haney, by the way. I am the director of Tommy Education. Where you have a, we're a boutique property education company and we help you get more money from property and also produce fantastic homes for the communities of the UK and abroad. Um, we have uh, great programs, mentoring academies, etc. And if you're interested, visit tommyhaney.com to find out more. We also do free events. But anyway, now, one thing to start with when you're working with trades is be really clear what you want. And that's really hard sometimes when you're starting out because let's say you bought your first investment property and um, times are the essence. Every day that goes by, you're losing money. In rent, you might have borrowed money, so you're paying interest. So you're like, ah, oh, I just wanna get this house refurbed. But then they say, well, what is it you want? Do you want, uh, do you want this quality or do you want this quality? So you're like, oh, well, I'm not sure because you haven't got the experience. So maybe lean on somebody who's got the experience to tell you, look, you don't need to spend a fortune on, um, on pine skirt and boards. Why don't you just go for MBF? So leveraging somebody who's got experience to tell you, look, just use this level of finish for this product, for this style of rental property or this style of um, sale property, helps you then um, create a, a schedule of works. There's the thing, schedule of works. So be clear on what is it you want. So you may wanna write that down. Write a schedule of works out, and therefore you've now got almost like a written agreement of what is it you want them to achieve. So let's say you're getting a bathroom done. That's the only thing you're going to do, a bathroom. So you would say things like, in here I want you to take all the tiles off. I want you to then, um, I want you to then pull out all the plumbing work. I want you to then plaster all the walls and the ceiling. I want you to put new lighting in. I want you to get the idea. So you, you li you're listing it out. Now you can get the builder. So you could take them around and say, look, this is what I want. Can you write all this down? So they write the schedule down. So you could leverage them if you don't want to, if you're not that kind of person who writes the list out. So you basically ultimately you create a list of what you're agreeing. And so now you've got a list, you can now start saying, well actually, so that list, if you get three quotes, you can now start looking at the price. So this is tip number two. So you've created a schedule, a list of stuff, and now tip number two is you can now compare apples with apples. And what I mean by that is when you have one builder come around, if it's just a verbal look, will you do all this? They go, yeah, it's going to be three grand. The next builder comes around and they go, it's going to be five. What you're going to find is when it's all verbal and you're trying to get it fast and going and going and going because you're excited when you get it in, then actually the guy with three grand or the woman with three grand and the person with five grand, you think, oh, well, they said they were gonna do that from the three, this person's gonna do the five, this one's cheaper, so I'm gonna go with these, but you'll realize they haven't included loads of extra stuff. Yeah, give me a thumbs up if you agree with that. So you've gotta make sure you get your agreement of schedule of stuff, and then you can compare apples with apples, builder for builder, trace person for trace person. So now you've got your list of schedules, you're now looking at the prices. But one thing you often forget, because you're so keen to get started, is you're like, yes, I've got somebody who can start next week, I've agreed the price, they're gonna crack on. But this is often where people always forget to also clarify is how long is it going to take? So I'd like to think that we get it right all the time. We're just doing a bathroom right now. We got a great price. We agreed exactly what was happening. They could start when we wanted, but I forgot to say how long is it going to take? Now we can do a full two bed house renovation in six weeks. Yeah, six weeks, full rip out, everything brand new. This particular trace person is now on week five and all they've done is one bathroom. Can you believe it? So therefore that's frustrating us because we're, the bathroom's not functioning, it means the house is upside down because the bath's in the lounge, everywhere's dusty. So can you see how that's a frustration? Yeah. So for, for tip number three is get, not just agree a, a, create a list of, uh, of agreed works, agree a, a price and then agree a time scale. Now, additional tips on top of these three. 
Now you've got these people that you're thinking, I like these, qualify the work that they're doing. So get them to look at testimonies, get previous examples of work, even go and speak to previous clients. Now if it's only a couple of grand, maybe not, but if you're spending 30,000, 60,000, 100,000, like our latest project we just instructed last week, it'll be a 200,000 pound scheme of like, development work. So we pre-qualified them. We've actually used them on previous jobs, so it's easier. But when you're starting out with brand new people, you don't know them, you don't know them, you don't trust them, um, they're not fully credible. This is how we stagger to get better results. Give me a thumbs up if you agree with this, and, uh, or you go, you know what, I do this already. So because of that, you've got to upskill, have more emotional intelligence to work with it. Now a couple more things, when it goes wrong, you've got to have the ability to challenge them and hold them to account. And that can be hard too, because sometimes if you work them with like really cheap trades, they're not the most emotionally resilient. And it's harsh to say that in some ways, but at the same time, it's reality, yeah? So if you say, by the way, the work's not good enough quality, sometimes they're like, Wah! So I like to work with professional trades. So I spend, I prefer to pay a bit more money and work with quality people who actually can cope when things go wrong. So have you ever had it where you've um, had it go wrong and the builders just like going, Wah! now I'm gonna quickly share a quick story. Is I remember doing one renovation. I was trying to do everything on the cheap. And so I had a full-time job. I was doing a lot of work at 2 a.m and I was like then knocking down walls and I was saying, right, I'm gonna start leveraging. So I started bringing in some trays, like a plasterer. I thought I was doing great because he was paying him 65 pounds a day, pay him um, pay him peanuts, get monkeys is the mantra. I was doing it, thinking I was good, but blimey, as soon as things started going wrong, I was getting like threatening phone calls, voicemails, and then I, I ended up kicking these this team off the job, saying, no, I'm not having you back. And he was even sending me threatening messages going, I want my tools back. I was going, stop, not only got any tools. So uh, because he was threatening, I didn't want to return his calls. This is, by the way, this was like seven years ago. And, and then in a way, he suddenly I, I text him back saying, what have I got that you want, what, that you need? He's like, I need me spray bottles back. And by the way, spray bottles are like 99 pence spray bottles from like uh, Wilkinson's. And he said I had two of them and I was holding them ransom. So he was gonna come round and uh, damage the house if it didn't return us two spray bottles. Isn't that insane, yeah? But this, that, this is what I was dealing with. So I, what I learned from that is, um, pay peanuts, get monkeys, pay better quality for better quality trades, agree a list of things, agree a price, agree a time scale, and quality assure it before you finish and pay them. If you found this useful, please share this out. We wanna give you massive content. I do like giving videos all the time, but do also comment, what else do you want to hear from me? What more content do you want to hear? Put in the box below, and please do share this if you found it of value. It's my, I, I'm giving these for free as a thank you. It would be awesome if you share this out too. Well, that's it, I'm finished. Have a good day.